Okay, here are another old bit of yellowy looking electronic gear. It's a Senyo calculator. CY2157. I'm guessing the 70s sometime, made in Japan. And I think this thing was meant to be not working, but I did give it a quick look. Someone's cut the plug off and hasn't done a very good job of replacing it with an old one. It's probably been like that since the 70s or something. I think once I put that switch back to zero and set a couple of these other switches, it seemed to work all right. So we've got negative overflow. I think that was pretty standard with this type of adding circuits they used in these things for overflow to be like a, a final carrier or whatever. 23 plus 23, 46 times 6, 276. Uh, clear all, is it? Oh, is that clear memory? Clear all, I think CA maybe. 2 times 6, seems to work. 12, let's divide it by. Oh, there. God, what a place to put it. 12 divided by 6, oh, 24, that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, now we're going mental. We're getting all digits up. Clear all. 6 divided by 2. Maybe I don't input it that way. 3, oh, that worked that time. Maybe I, did, maybe I didn't hit clear all. 12 divided by 6. 2, yes, that's working. Oh. So that's the negative. Interesting. 6 minus 2, 4, R, C, C, K, R, M. Is that some sort of memory or something to do with the memory? 55 times 6, memory plus. No, I don't see a memory line anywhere. Uh, get the right button. So we want 6 minus 9 equals 3 and I don't see a negative light there but whether that's blown or something I guess that could be a problem with it or is that an early LED? looks like an LED but doesn't mean it is an overflow what do I get like full digits 666 times 666666 sounds a bit evil oh we've got an overflow light which is the unevil 444443 plus whatever. And this came from John Crean's Electronic Business Equipment, 255 Liverpool Street, Hobart. Telephone 342957. Sold and serviced by. And we can see the original colour under there because it's a nice foil label. So this could do with some retro brighting. But I think it's basically functional, which is not surprising. Like most of these Japanese calculators and stuff, again, they just go forever. So nicely made. But they just went forever, even though it's probably had a fair bit of use in a business or something. That's the kind of place this would have been used. Nice big one you can sort of punch all your accounts into or whatever takings for the day or something. Bit of dirt and muck in there. Oh my god, a lot of dust in there. So, oh look at this. We've got the old, old nice gold plated chips. They're not quite ceramic ones. EAs. EA7172, EA7022. Both have got 7401A. That might be the date code. 1974, first month. Quite possible. It's even got a look at this, an edge connector on it. On the board. Japanese ISI or something, ISL, ISE. I'll get it right in a minute. DP127F, you could probably still find a data sheet on it. What is this thing stuck to the back of it? Oh, that's, oh, so it's got, okay. Oh, so it's not an edge. I'm expecting to see pins sticking out the bottom of this thing soldered to the circuit board, but it's got like little plug-in connectors on it. So that's what an old display that is. This is a real early one. I haven't looked in a calculator this early in a long, long time. It's got one of those old funny bridge rectifier things. I hope that's just you know, green spaghetti they put on the leads. I was going to say, otherwise the leads have gone very green. 
and these dyads yeah very black in the leads and stuff probably some silver migration going on or something and yet they still work ABS and that's our keypad nice solid one I don't know whether it's got contacts or read switches or what and that thing but probably just contacts of some sort but amazing they lasted that long and then we've, yeah, we've got these two lights they are very early LEDs I think I can see like a gold coated lead coming out on one of them so they are those very early I don't know if they were Japanese made American made who knows and some very old school capacitors Senyos still probably work alright I guess we should have a look at those That one's looking like the foil, the plastic's a bit back on it, like when they shrink when they're hot. But these, a lot of these ones were made like that, I think, because I doubt it's been particularly hot in here. So it's 100 volt at 10 mic. I probably should actually check that doesn't have any voltage in it, because that's probably some of the high voltage stuff for the fluoro display. Oh, three volts. I guess I'll take a risk and short them out a bit. I doubt there's going to be any real current there now. 2.1, 2.0, that's a 10 microfarad at high voltage. 250 volt is 2.5, so it still rates better. Three, should read about three on the ESR meter. They've even listed some of the key, key lines, key in E, key in three, or in one, I guess, five quarter. Decimal point four or two maybe Toshiba TM4356. I don't know if that's a memory chip. A very old school Toshiba memory chip, possibly. Can't remember what their TM chips were, but they might have been something like that. And yeah, very old school. Nice little metal plate, everything sits on in the power supply. What have we got there? Some sort of inductor maybe. Yeah, that's even got an earth a little toroidal wound onto the earth wire, so almost like an early bit of interference suppression. So that's quite amazing they were putting that in that early. But again, probably a little touch they did so it doesn't interfere with your Senyo radio or something while you're using your Senyo calculator, which would look bad. Is it to get that board out? Not that hard, I don't think, but I think I'll leave it for now. We've got a nice looking, is that going to come off easily? Yeah, little edge connector. Oh, it's even listed all the other connections on it by the look of it. Now, can I get it back on there without breaking anything? Yep. Sort of one you could have cut down and shoved on the back of your Commodore 64 by the look of it. Be about the right size, I think. So yeah, an interesting little piece of gear. Display's a bit different inside of the usual one. It's got the little, yeah, each individual thing's got that little sort of honeycomb fine mesh thing over it. I don't know, it looks like it's got actual heater or filament wires going down the, each little segment. Just one of them, maybe. So we don't have the usual modern display where the whole bunch of them go side to side. I'll have to look some of those chips up, see if there's anything interesting, see what this looks like without the... Yeah, you can see the little honeycomb usual thing, doesn't look as good when it's not diffused. Hmm, but nothing really exciting in it. Looks like the capacitors are still good, and that's the only other thing I want to check is that... Oh, I've already got into an overflow just by typing too much in there. Yeah, it's a bit of disappointing if that other LED doesn't work. Five minus ten. Five, but no indication of negative. Hmm. Well, I guess the other thing we could go five minus five minus oh ah. Oh. Well, how did that decide to come up? Ten. Mine, oh, it just lights up. I didn't even notice that when you hit negative. Five 
minus 5, that's going to 20. Uh, this, some of these are a bit weird the way they operate, I think, aren't they? 10 minus 5 equals 5. But if we do 10 minus 5 minus, I guess, gives us 15. 5 gives us 20. Oh, now the negative's lit. Minus 5 minus 30. I think it's something to do with some of this accounting type use of these things. Where it doesn't operate exactly like you'd use your little school calculator. I'd say so that's all working then, so at least we know that LED works as primitive as it is. It is functional. So even that hasn't failed on this thing. So that's pretty impressive. I wonder if it's really as old as 1974. I would not be at all surprised. I guess I should have cleaned a bit of the dust out, but I'll put that back together for now. Now that I've got a video, I might look at what those ICs are. And see if I can find out any info on them. But I assume these are an early application of the Japanese when they learned how to make... There are some good videos on it out there on, on YouTube of when the Japanese made their first like relay computers and stuff, which I guess was really just a relay calculator, a bunch of adder circuits, or half adders and full adders, I guess. And then they quickly progressed from there. So I assume this is probably just a bunch of adder circuits that are used in creative ways to do the other functions. Of course, we only got our basic four operations, negative, positive, or subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, other things are memory functions, which I assume is probably what that Toshiba chip is. That was probably a pretty fancy feature back in these days. I don't think your standard calculator even had memory on it, not your little LCD sort of, or you didn't even have LCD then probably. And yeah, no square roots or anything. Don't know what the five quarters or whatever that is. I'll have to look up what that actually is. And these, I don't even know what they do. I don't think I've ever actually read an instruction book for one of these business calculators. So I guess I should see if I can find one and learn a bit about it. And I'll look at those chips and see what they are. Nothing here to tell you the date at all. Four watts, 240 volts. Looks like they just stamp the voltage in as needed. Stamp the serial number in as needed. Yeah, interesting bit of old gear anyway. Thanks for watching.